Hi everybody. Um, this is some uh, multi-threaded uh, unicast uh, API usage in Java. This is from chapter uh, Java for programmers. Uh, we're going to use the uh, classic uh, in Java. Uh, one of the things we notice is it can take a, uh, a host name and a port name, but sometimes we know the address of the um, of the host. We don't exactly know what service is running. And I thought it would be fun to uh, create a, a multi-threaded uh, scanner that opened up a IP address to a socket and check uh, openable. Yeah, I can't expect decent English from a computer engineer. Anyways, um, what we're going to do is we're going to get the uh, internet address off of a uh, host uh, 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 described in my host's Etsy file, uh, my Etsy hosts file. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll uh, get the port check to see if it's um, available. So um, what we're going to build is something based on the on the socket pass. We're going to enable uh, scans to work over different um, uh, ports and this is are running. We're going to um, assemble a, a scanner that goes from port 1 to port 65,536 or 530, 536 and 16-bit uh, quantity and uh, starts starting at 1. Um, it, we're not going to need server socket for this, but it's nice that are available in the server and accept uh, a connection from an outside on a specific port. So whenever we build a service, we always start with a port and IP address by somehow mapping uh, the name to an IP address using a DNS or domain name server. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're, we're going to scan to see available on different ports. Uh, so about, you might say, well, this is kind of like network hacking. And maybe in a way it is hacking. You know, this is the kind of hacking where you can pull. I'm a Unix server, but I don't quite know what sockets um, are available, what ports are running. And it'd be really nice to know that. And this is one of those things where, you know, over the years, on my little uh, scanning it to see what services are running sounds like a generally useful thing to do. Uh, it's obviously running its own using something other than Java, probably C. Plus plus. What I'd like to do is the threaded process. We're describing an architecture for a multi-threaded server, but I'm going to do a multi-client. And then we'll start a whole bunch of sockets at the ports and try and see if these things can be scanned for um, uh, between a client and the server. So um, when we think about multi-threaded servers, we think about handling the accept. When we think about multi-threaded clients, we think about and connecting to it multiple times from the same IP address. Now, that can be a dangerous thing. Your IP address uh, could be blocked. People see it as a denial of service attack, etc. But it's no problem for me because I'm running my own server and I'm going to be able to do um, whatever I like eventually. We've already seen how to build a multi threaded uh, daytime uh, server, day and time server. If we can build something like a client, it's going to determine something or other about the, um, the ports. So we'll start with a port scanner and we've got a little. Um, main address. We're not going to uh, limit us in threads. We can use as many as we like. Um, we're at the last port we're going to scan according to the um, um, Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers uh, is 65,535. We'll start with port 1. Uh, we've got a 16-bit unsigned quantity and we're going to use the first port in our last port with a thing called the port factory and our host. So when we look at the host, the host name is Moon. When we want an internet address, we just map by name into uh, an, in an internet address called host, and that's going to be port factory. So when we're uh, what we're seeing is first port and going to generate instances of um, uh, these ports for us as an enumeration. So we'll be able to get a whole bunch of ports. That's kind of an interesting idea, right? Because what you're really doing here is you're looking for these ports as elements, which you're going to then something of type. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go into that port and you're going to try and scan it. And the scan is going to open up a socket and check to see if you can find a listener on that port. And if you can, then uh, this will print out with a listener on the host for a given. And we can just close the socket when we're done. So that shouldn't take too terribly long, but long enough so that we might want to run several in parallel or simulating a concurrency, although in this case I think we'll have truly concurrent computing going on. So um, what we do in is, uh, and I don't know if this is going to throw you for a loop or not, but um, a lambda expression, which is usable, 
And uh, that's like a functional interface that essentially allows us to take no arguments to the run method. And um, we could probably make an um, anonymous inner class. But I'm going to try and use the lambda expression. We'll get that later. We'll do a scan for the port and a thread and start the thread. And run pretty quick because it's multi threaded. So let's take a look. And there you go. So it turns out that on Moon, we've got ports uh, that are listening for services on a few of the famously port numbers. For example, 20 would be uh, an SMTP. In fact, if you like, you can go to Moon itself and you can see where the port numbers have been assigned to for SSH. Uh, you can see some other kind. Perhaps port 25 is in here somewhere. Here it is. There's the mail server. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Looks like we got port 80. And we can see what port 80 is. HTTP. Uh, let's see what else is going on. We got port 21. Port 20 FTP protocol. So we've got several different services on different ports. Uh, let's see what other ports we Well, here's some interesting ports. Uh, port 110, I believe that is the um, post office protocol, but let's just check. And uh, sure enough, POP3 protocol. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Port 111, that is a uh, remote procedure um, protocol from uh, Sun. Port 143, I don't even know what that is. It's IMAP protocol. Three, sounds familiar. Ah, HTTPS. Okay, so that's the secure host protocol. Uh, let's see, we've got a few in here. There's some uh, 548, let's see what that is. Nice to know what's running. Stuff was running. So 548 is not listed here. I'm not quite sure what that might be. Oh, that's Apple File Talk Protocol. Uh, that says here he's doing uh, 875. Not seeing 875 here. Let's do a quick search and see where that is. So cat and pipe into a grip on uh, 875. And uh, looks like it's um, remote quota. Remote quota. That's um, that's probably for remote file system questions. Okay, what do we got here? Nine nine three. We'll do it again. Only nine nine three. So there's a uh, um, another IMAP server. Uh, nine nine five. Let's try that one. Ah, pop three secure. I didn't know I had that running. Funny what you find running here. Let's try another one. Uh, this one is 89. I have no idea what that could be. So we'll uh, we'll take a look. And it's uh, WBEM HTTPS. So knowing nothing at all about it, I would probably need to um, maybe use the Google or something and uh, and see what that, that might be. So you get the idea. There are a whole bunch of services that could be running. PC, that, that's the um, that's the backup system automatically shut down the uh, uh, the computer if power gets cut. Now, the computer itself has had a number of hours of uptime. Let's take a look. Uptime, he says it's been up 1,500 days, which uh, that's, that's quite, let's see, it's been up uh, 1572 divided by 365 comes to 0.3 years. So that's pretty good. And it's load, he's light, lightly loaded. So um, that's a little laptop and ports using um, the uh, TCP the socket uh, suite in Java. Hope you like my little demo. Thank you. Bye-bye.